Hello my friends. Welcome to my channel, Lindy's Magpie Reads. If you're new here, I'm Lindy. I read a lot, so mostly I talk about books on this channel. I have other things to say as well, and I am going to do that first. So if you're here just to hear about books, look for chapter headings down below and you should be able to na navigate to the different titles as I talk about them. So what I want to tell you first is that I had a fabulous but short trip to Whitehorse Yukon uh, just over this past weekend. My sister lives there. She has a farm with her husband and there she has two kids and the most recent addition to their farm are some yaks. I had never seen yaks in person before, so that was pretty exciting for me. Now, the day length is very short that far north, so it was mostly in the dark. Fortunately, the baby yaks, so these are about eight months old, they were in a barn with a light, so I can show you a little bit of footage of them from close up. You can see how small these animals are. They're not quite full grown yet, uh, but I will also include some footage at the very end of this video. Just scenes from Aurora Mountain Farm. That's Simon and Tom's farm. And uh, you can see some, at least one adult yak along with the cows. The cattle they have are mostly um, crosses with ling, so they're a pretty small breed. And then there's some Icelandic sheep as well, and they have the, these great big fluffy coats. <laughs> um, the one day that I was there during the daytime, so sunrise is at 11 a.m. right now, and sunset is at 4.45. Most days, I was with Simone at her meat shop. If you watch this channel regularly, you probably know I'm a vegetarian, but this is, uh, you know, this is where my sister is, so that's where I was hanging out. And uh, she had things for me to help out with that were not meat related, including I cooked up a big batch of cranberry salsa and brought home some jars for myself. Stirring up the big pot. It has both bog cranberries and wild cranberries in it. Some spiciness. Uh, it's so yummy. I also cut out labels and labeled the jars. You know, things like that. I'm not touching the meat. <laughs> so the timing of my visit to Whitehorse was to coincide with the Northern Fiber Guild's Cranberry Market. So they have a craft sale and I'm a member of the Northern Fibers Guild and I had this big stack of cotton bandanas that I had dyed because I have been learning a whole bunch of different textile techniques and Bandanas are a good size to work with and experiment with. So I had lots. And sale so went well. And I had some great conversations with other members of the guild who were also there in the room. Oh, and I met one of my YouTube channel subscribers, Robin. She <laughs> introduced herself. Uh, I was so happy to meet her in person, kind of catch up a little bit. It's lovely to chat with everybody in the comments down below, but so special to meet face to face. So Robin, thanks so much for saying hello. We were in the elders lounge of the Kwanlin Dunn Cultural Center. Kwan Lin Dun are the group of indigenous people who were there first on the banks of the Whitehorse River, where Whitehorse is now located. And you can see some of the faces of the 
Kwan Lin Dunn elders up on the wall and in a case uh, just outside the room that we were in there's this gorgeous dress it is uh, Judy Gingell's commissioner's dress so she was the first Aboriginal person to be appointed as commissioner of the Yukon Territory and she served from 1995 to the year 2000 and uh, this was a dress that she wore at her inaugural commissioner's ball in Dawson City in June of 1995. Judy Gingell, way back in 1973, was a member of a group that traveled from Yukon to Ottawa to speak to the then Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau with their grievances and that started a whole chain of events of uh, land claims settlements in the Yukon Territory. Pierre Trudeau was the father of Canada's current Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. One of the things that I love to do when I'm visiting my sister is to go with her to a local hot springs the Eclipse Nordic Spa is only about 10 kilometers from her farm and it is such a delight. Uh, when the weather is below zero, you can borrow a toque if you want and keep your head warm while you're soaking in the hot water. They also have steam rooms and saunas. Oh, it's just so lovely there. And I have never seen this, but they do have uh, some kind of frozen hair competitions too, when the weather is really cold, I guess. And I watched some slides in the reception area. Um, seems like a bad idea to get your head so cold, but I guess you could duck right under the hot water again and get warmed up. Okay, now on to book coverage. Uh, but before I get to the books that I finished in the past week, I want to talk about an article that's in the New York Times where they feature what they think are the best book covers of 2023. Now, I'm sorry if you're gonna reach a paywall if you don't have a subscription to the New York Times. If you're on a laptop, there is a trick. If you uh, do a search and on your search list you find that New York Times article and then right click and then select open incognito window or something like that, you should be able to read the article. That's a, a little trick I do every once in a while. But I just want to talk about the two books by Canadian authors that are on the list. Starting with one that I did not read. It's by Shawn Michaels and it's called Do You Remember Being Born? This is the American cover, the one that was featured in the article. It's quite different from the Canadian cover, which I will show you and I would like to know what you think uh, the two covers. Do you like one more than the other? The second book on that list that I want to talk about is Your Driver is Waiting by Priya Guns. Now I think this one is going to be on my list of best books of 2023. Let's see a little bit more of the cover. Got the front goes right to the spine and there's more information about the design in the New York Times article. The cover designer is Emily Mayen and that this illustration on the cover is by Nadia Hayek and the comment is that the illustration captures bitterness and class resentment with a restraint that serves as a visual metaphor for the frugal ways and means that help the protagonist survive the gig economy. The upside down sticker of the smiley face on the cracked mirror is a welcome 
if snarling grace note if you have a favorite cover of 2023 please let me know in the comments down below uh, because i love talking about cover design all right now on to the books that i have finished recently i'm going to start with this a collection of poetry, Absence of Wings, by Arlene Paré. It's a Canadian poet who lives right here in Victoria. Uh, she is a lesbian, although this one does not have lesbian content. It is a true story. Arlene's sister, in the 1980s, adopted a girl from Brazil. The girl is referred to as A in this account, and A had quite a short life. She struggled with mental illness, and uh, Paré's description of being far away, so living in Victoria or in British Columbia while her sister was in Ottawa, Ontario, she was only able to uh, provide moral support, you know, from afar. She didn't visit, wasn't able to visit all that often. The vivid personality of A uh, is really well described in here, as well as the heartbreak of uh, the many challenges that A and Paré's sister had to face. There are some excerpts from official documents. There are uh, imagined viewpoints from other uh, people. Um, there were many times that I wept and had to set the book down and just feel those emotions. If you're a person who likes a book that makes you cry, I highly recommend this. So one of the uh, imagined voices is A's teaching assistant. Her name was Jean Smiley. Spirited is the word I use for her, as in lively, as in haunted, hunted. Oh my, she was fast. She could take care of herself, prescient too. After I gave her my home phone number, forbidden, of course, by the Ottawa School Board, she became more amenable. That's how she knew I cared about her. Never hid under her desk again. These poems left me deeply, deeply moved. Five stars. As a matter of fact, all of the books I'm going to tell you about today, I gave five stars to in Goodreads. So much great, great stuff. The next two are graphic novels. So I'm going to start with one for kids. It's called Parachute Kids and it's by Betty Tang. So this is about uh, three siblings from Taiwan who in mid-1985, so same time period as uh, Absence of Wings, these young people came to the USA, I think to California, with their parents, but their parents had to leave on account of the visa situation, left the kids under the care of a, a, another family who lived nearby, but basically they were on their own and their trials and tribulations with learning English and going to school and navigating being a, an immigrant without parental uh, oversight and it is funny touching, moving. It is based on the author's own experiences, uh, but fictionalized. And this is a situation that uh, quite a number of young people found themselves in. Um, 
the book won a National Book Award for Young People's Literature. It's fantastic. I highly recommend it. Age eight, all the way up to adults. Yeah, so good. The next graphic novel, Shubek Lubek, is by Dina Mohammed. This one is definitely for adults. Uh, it also has queer content. Oh, I didn't mention, did I? In Parachute Kids, um, one of the, the kids uh, the, uh, who's in about grade seven is gay. So, so he's navigating that as well as being a new immigrant without parents in the U.S. Okay, let's back to Schubeck Lubeck. The book uh, opens in the Arabic way. So you start on the right and then move to the left. So uh, in a similar way that Japanese manga would be read. I had a digital edition of it and I, when I was looking at the cover, I kept tapping on the wrong side to get it to turn. Anyway, I figured it out. It's set in a contemporary alternate Egypt where uh, wishes can be mined and colonial powers have pretty much taken control of that and then there's so many regulations to do with wishes and the main storyline is an elderly man who has a kiosk in the streets of Cairo and he has three first-class wishes to sell. The book is divided into three sections and there's a section for each wish and what happens to them. This is absolutely delightful. The uh, the main storyline is in these black and white expressive lines and in between there are short funny bits in full color uh, talking about the, the history of wishes in this world and so on. Really really enjoyed this book. The queer content in it is the largest section, the middle section, is about a non-binary character who is suffering from depression and they're not sure whether it's going to be helpful or not to use a wish to cure their depression. So struggling with um, ethics as well as mental health. Ooh very good. Next I'm going to tell you about a book I did not finish. It's an audiobook. I actually did not get very far at all, maybe half an hour in. It was The Age of Vice by Dipti Kapoor and uh, it's a novel set in India and uh, there is so much crime involved in the story. It's very dark and I decided that I was just not in the mood for that kind of story. Move on. The next audiobook that I picked up is Anne Michaels latest novel. It's called Held and I just felt held by this book. Oh, it's a story that's told in uh, multiple short stories and it spans about a century starting with the First World War and I guess four generations in a family although it doesn't move sequentially. You go a little bit forward and then back and it's not always immediately clear how these characters connect to the people we've met previously. Uh, there are also real figures from history that are kind of here and there in these stories, like Marie Curie, for example. I bookmarked 
a whole bunch of passages in this audiobook because it's the writing. Uh, Anne Michaels is a poet as well as a novelist and her language is beautiful. This is a kind of meditative sort of book looking at life, death, our connections to each other, uh, war features, uh, and how we make sense of our lives given that, uh, for example, a character who is working in a hospital in the middle of a battlefield might spend hours saving the life of a baby and then the hospital is bombed an hour later and the baby's dead. Not to mention everybody else. Uh, how do we go forward? And the answer in this book has to do with love and not being afraid to open ourselves to love. Uh, there are some uh, sort of mystical elements, mysteries, some things that are unexplained. Uh, for example, a character who is a photographer and sometimes ghosts seem to appear in these images that he takes of people. Oh. So, so beautiful. If you like philosophical writing that you just want to read over and over, in my case, I listened almost the whole way through twice. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. So, speaking of soothing audiobooks, I listened to uh, a repeat of a CBC Ideas uh, program on the radio when I was in the car with my sister. And they were talking about the rise of uh, Lovecraft and whether or not you can separate his racist ideas from his art, his writing. But in the beginning, towards the beginning of this episode, they talk about how an individual is so small in the midst of the universe, the, the vast stars all around, um, galaxies, you know. And this was described as cosmic horror and and that that's what um, Lovecraft was capturing in his in his books but to me uh, thinking about being small in the midst of the universe is not a horror uh, it reminded me of an audiobook that I read a few years or listened to a few years ago called the End of Everything, astrophysically speaking, and it's by Katie Mack. And she writes about uh, the many possibilities, or several possibilities, of what might happen to planet Earth and our Sun uh, billions of years in the future. And taking such a huge, uh, large, view, the big view of things, somehow is really, really comforting to me. Uh, in that same CBC Ideas program, they also talked about how it, we may be like dust, but we're glorious dust. and. They also talk to writers who are turning Lovecraft's um, ideas uh, and racist ideas on their head and, you know, totally uh, looking at things from a different viewpoint. So 
I do recommend that you can listen to it online and I'll leave a link down below if you're interested. I've got a kitty here who really wants to come up. But I, I've got my iPad with some notes on my lap, so she's, <laughs> she's not particularly welcome. Bye. Okay, last book that I'm going to tell you about and favorite, I guess, of all of those that I've told you today and that is The Vulnerables by Sigrid Nunez. This one is read by Hilary Huber. I forgot to mention Anne Michaels reads her own audiobook, Held. Ah, does a lovely job of it. Hilary Huber does a lovely job of this too. And once again, for me, this book is all about the writing and the feeling of uh, wisdom and comfort that I got from listening to it. It's a story of a woman during the early part of the pandemic. She's living in New York City and she ends up quarantining with someone who's a stranger to her. The situation is explained in the book. Uh, our need for connection with other people is just so well done in this book. Uh, again, like Anne Michaels, it's a philosophical book a kind of story where uh, all of the action is pretty much interior so even though uh, the central character spends a lot of time walking outside uh, uh, you know we have her thoughts and observances uh, and once again I found myself re-listening to passages. The final section of this novel I listened to three times and I'm going to be happy to check it out again. I don't think I will have a chance to do that in December and do the Remember December. Does it count if you reread in the same month? I don't know. With poetry and sometimes with audiobooks, I will listen twice through, or even three times, uh, uh, in a row. So uh, I don't count those as rereading. Hmm. I just count as rereading if it's you know if some time has passed before I go back to a book. Not sure why that is. It's just like I guess. The second time through is still part of my... Mm, hmm. Yeah, I'm actually not sure why I don't count it as rereading. But anyway, what do you think? I transcribed a whole bunch of passages. I did not bring my commonplace book here with me, so I'm not going to read you any of them. Trust me. There's many gems, so many gems in this book. And if you've read it, let me know what you think down below in the comments. That's all I've got for you today. So thank you so very much for watching. I always appreciate hearing from you. So please uh, do take the time to say hello down in the comments. Um, put a little a little cow or something down there. I am going to end this off, as I said, with some scenes from Aurora Mountain Farm. Bye for now. Thanks again.